Please be seated. At this point, uh, first uh, the reading, <coughs> the Lord Jesus Christ is with you. His peace is with you. The God, the Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you as you listen to the words of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The message today is judging. Okay? And of course, I'll have a story to start. The story is about uh, this group of friends that were celebrating a table. And they were uh, having, everybody had good words for each one. And suddenly one of them had to leave. At the moment they, that, that person left, everybody else started talking. You see that guy? He seems so, so cool. And you know, he's going into a lot of trouble. Nobody likes him. But he pretends that he is the top of the world. Oh, no, no. He, he's no good. And after just gossiping and criticizing for a while, another one had to leave. And as he left, the other said, huh. And he thinks he, his wife loves him? Ah, you know, that is a terrible situation. I don't know what's going on with him, but he doesn't seem to see what's going on. Besides, in his job, he's having a hard time because he never is on time. Once again, another one had to leave, and another one had to leave, and, and then there were only two at the table. And he had to leave. Just look around, walk to the other guy, says, I'm leaving now, but just remember, you are no good. Nobody likes you, and I don't like you either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea is, what is the Bible telling us about judging? And we have a, a, a Luke 637, something very special about judging. And it's using an interesting word. The word is krino. That's a Greek word, krino. That we translate as judging, but it's not just judging. It means criticizing. The word krino comes from uh, what we use as the word criticize. It comes from that Greek root. Krino is criticize. It's comparing, but also as a critic. And so the idea is how we look at other people, like in the table with the friends, or the so-called friends, how we look at other people, and we measure other people. And we look at the others with a magnifying glass, and we accuse others, just pointing fingers, because we are perfect, they are not, okay? So the idea is how ashamed we feel when we have the pressure of people talking about us. And again, the problem is not just talking, is gossiping and sharing our conclusions about other people. So we need to dig a little deeper. And of course, we're not talking about the judging that happens in the, in the, in the context. You probably saw the Olympics with all the skaters and the technical merits and their mer merits. They went out and you said, I thought it was pretty good, and then they got bad grades. And everybody, everybody had a different opinion, an eight, a nine, a 10. So judges see things in a different way when we are judging a contest. But this is not about criticizing. Criticizing is about, is about pointing fingers. Pointing fingers about what somebody did, and that caused that somebody to feel ashamed and be a part of the rest. Now, we have this idea that we are correcting imperfection. We are helping people when we criticize them. But that's not necessarily true. This is really a downer when we point out things, not with the spirit of just making the merits, the artistic merits or the technical merits. We are thinking about how we put people down and how we gossip about the people behind their back. So now let me explain this situation. She is judging others before kids and after kids. The kids is me hey, me say, hey. And the mom is saying, you get back here now. And the other one that didn't have kids is that poor child. The same situation after having kids, the mom says to the same, in the same situation, you get back here now. And the other lady says, that poor mom. <laughs> so we change the perspective. Here, uh, we have a, a case uh, that I heard once, it was pretty 
interesting. It was in the in the bus. The kids were fighting, arguing, just yelling at each other, just having a, a very difficult time. And people in the bus are looking at them over their shoulders, saying, hmm, "Some kind of discipline, you know? They they can't have control of their kids. And you see what they're doing." And everybody started criticizing the kids for being fighting and, and having this hard time. And at that time, the father explained to those who were around him, I'm very sorry for my kids. We are coming from the hospital. Their mom is dying. And they do not know how to handle the situation. They are having a hard time and they are yelling and arguing only because they do not know how to express their grief, their fears. Immediately, everybody that started criticizing the, the father ended up having compassion for those kids. So we really don't know what's going on in the life of others. Nobody has it easy. Everybody has issues. You never know what people are going through. So pause before you start judging, criticizing, or mocking other. Everybody's fighting their own unique war. We don't know what's going on in the life of other people. And we think that we know, we understand, but we don't know what's going on. So that is what happened in the story that we read in the Old Testament about Joseph that was thrown in the pit by his brothers. They hated him. And after that, they sold him in slavery but long story short, he became the second in Egypt after Pharaoh. He became a very powerful man in Egypt. And his brothers, after a famine in, in, in their native land, went to Egypt to get grain. And there is when they met. This apparently was uh, the one command in all Egypt. But at that time, he revealed that he was Joseph their brother. And because of this relationship, Joseph explained to them that they were mean to him, but he, he was holding no grudges, and he actually was sent by God to that situation. So they acted in selfishness, but God intended that for good. The idea is, we do not know what we are judging and Joseph could have judged his brothers, and his brother judged Joseph, but we do not know what's going on in the life of other people. That's what uh, the, the conclusion uh, that we can get from this passage is the habit of criticism is poisonous to any relationship. And even more, judging and criticizing others is how we destroy our own happiness. Because uh, the, the point is that when we point fingers, the problem that it has is that there's one finger pointing one direction and three pointing back to us, right? And so because of that, Kim was giving me notes up back there. <laughs> yes, as we point out, there are three fingers pointing back to us. So the, the thing is, forsake the habit of criticizing and judging others. That's something Jesus said. And so we have a, a saying that is very important as we look back to what happened in our lives and we see that even though people may be criticizing us or we may be criticizing others, God always had our back and God always was with us. So God, we believe God has the world in his hands. And because of that, we need to look back and realize <coughs> That in our past, as we look forward, but in our past, we always look to those things that seem terrible at the time, like in Joseph's case. But right now, God has an, a way to making those good things in the future be a consequence of the bad things that happened in the past. So, we can look back just to learn and use those things to have a, a good look of what's coming forward. Look back and thank God. Look forward and trust God. So the idea of the judging is something that we need to eradicate from our life, the criticizing 
something looking to take back from our life, take completely out of our life. And as we look back, just realize God was there and took you from those bad situations to where you are, uh, you are here now. So all we can say is keep calm. God is in control. Oh, we'll be fine. Amen. <laughs>